Hi guys, Righteous Rhema here, bringing you your dose of truth for the day. And that is this. It's a hard truth. Sometimes it's a sad truth to us. But sometimes God don't do it. Sometimes God don't do it. So I was talking with a friend of mine about he was going through, you know, he's going through a, con through a condition. And I just left, you know, my mom passing and everything. And we were just on the video call and we just began to cry. And and as we were crying about the conditions, you know, not not out of pity or self-pity or, or you know, whiningness or whatever or, or ingratitude towards God or ungratefulness toward God, rather. We were just like, I'm just like, sometimes God don't do it. Sometimes God don't do it. And you all, some of y'all know that I was diagnosed with junior rheumatoid arthritis. Junior rheumatoid arthritis, JRA, when I was like around 12 years old. Um, of course, now that I'm not a junior no more, it's probably just regular arthritis. <laughs> but, you know, I've been in many prayer lines. I'm 38 years, I'm 37 years old. That notes when I was like 12, 13. So that means I've been like 25 something years of prayer lines, right? I mean, I'm a Pentecostal, charismatic, I go to church services, where they lay hands, cast the devils, run around the church, all the things. And been told, oh, God gonna heal you. They lay hands on my knees, put oil on my knees, run up in the church, put a hand on my forehead. I pass out in the church, all the things. And I wake up and I still have the pain in my knees. Still have the pain in my joints, right? Really just my knees. And I was talking to the friend on video call and I was just, I started to cry and I said, I mean, sometimes God just don't do it. Like y'all, if, if love and prayer could have kept my mother here, she wouldn't have died. I promise you, if love and prayer could have kept my mother alive, she wouldn't have died. Because me and my sisters and people around the world, our extended family was praying, media family was praying, um, pastors, um, people I didn't know even pray, some of my coworkers, people, friends, everybody was just praying for us, right? Praying for my mother, rather. And she still died. And so I just said, I was on the phone with my friend, I was like, I just kept crying. I was like, sometimes God don't do it. And even I woke up the next day and I was, I cried like three times the next day. And I'm like, sometimes God don't do it. And I'm here to tell y'all the truth. Sometimes God don't do it. Sometimes God don't heal the loved one. Sometimes God does not remove the paralysis. Sometimes God does not remove the pain. Sometimes God does not remove the diagnosis. Okay. Sometimes he don't do it. And I think word of faith movements do people a disservice when they tell you that if you get this anointed oil or this anointed prayer cloth, my mother had, my mama had, look around her house after she passed away. I mean, just even when she was alive, it was probably like 10 little vows. I wish I had one around me. 10 vows of bottles of oil from different people. Some oil from Bishop Mason, the founder of Church of God in Christ. So one oil was from um, Jerusalem, from the actual, it's olives from Jerusalem. I'm telling y'all, we had all oil been prayed over everything. And sometimes the oil works on other conditions, but it's not, it did not heal my mother, okay? And I'm telling y'all, sometimes God don't do it. And what I learned last year is that God is not a genie. God does not do what we tell him to do. He let us pray and ask him, God, will you please do this and such? But God does not have to honor any of our prayer requests. Now, I do believe that the effectual fervent prayer of a right, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. I think that's in James, the New Testament. I do believe in prayer. I believe in prayer, prayer without ceasing. Um, I believe, you know, um, believe that you um, receive that you have asked for. I believe all those verses about prayer and believing God. But y'all, sometimes God don't do it. And I'm thinking about Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus. And um, sometimes God don't do it because he wants you to know him in a greater, different way. So, you know, everyone at that time, you know, Lazarus died. Everybody knew Jesus as a healer. Everybody knew Jesus heals. You know, Jesus heals. He heals these different people. You know, he heals. But in this story, which is a true, not as a story, it's a real story, history, God wanted them to know him in a different way. They knew him as healer, but he wanted them to know him as a resurrector. And so Mary and Martha was like, Jesus, if you would have been here, our brother would have died. It'd been four days. And so but now he stinketh. And and Jesus wept. Yeah, he he was he was he was sad. He knew he was gonna come back to life. And as was come back to life, but he was still sad. He wept. The shortest verse in the in the in the Bible is Jesus wept. You know, the New Testament. And 
Jesus, God was more concerned with the Israelites, the Jewish people, knowing him in a different way. Instead of just knowing him as healer, we already know that. He wanted them to know him as the resurrection. The resurrection. The resurrector. And so he let him die. He let Lazarus die for four days. And they put all the fields that you feel when honey just dies. For four days, they put the fields. Okay? And they're like, if Jesus would have been here, he wouldn't have died because Jesus is the healer. But sometimes God wants you to know him in a different, better way. And so when my mother passed away, I knew God in a different way, a more powerful way. If he would have healed her, he'd been like, God healed my mother. God heals her all the time. But when he, when he, but to see how God carried me through that thing and carried my family through that thing, like, that's the bigger miracle. How God cared. Like, y'all don't say my mama was a boss. My mama was a, my mama was a boss. She was not just, you know, nice little house. My mama was a boss, like a partner of the oldest law firm still operating in Tennessee. And so when she passed away, all her duties, we were not prepared to do her duties. I'm sitting at her desk every day since August. She had to go through her email, trying to, trying to, trying to manage her, her massive stuff. She had all these different things going on, assets and everything. And, you know, things that she owned and possessed. And we should have never got all this stuff for her. And I was like, man, my mom was a boss. And I was like, man, the way I'm carrying, me and my sister, my sister carrying this stuff that she got going on and the coworkers and her law partner. I was like, I'm knowing God in a different way. God can keep you in some unimaginable stuff. You're like, how in the world am I able to fare these things, you know? Because God showed me him in a different way. God showed me, I'm going to help you navigate this difficult time. You're going to still look good. I know I look, don't I look good? Do I look like I'm, like I'm reading my mother? My mother passed less than three months ago, okay? And God has kept my joy, my peace. You know, he's, he's got his kept. He's showing me how, Missy, I can keep you, like, in a different way. Right? You thought you was going to just go through and suffer this thing, but I, God carried me through you. I'm carrying this thing gracefully. Like, I, I just now cleaned up her office a few days ago. We we're still cleaning up the house. We we're still organizing her affairs and everything. And so God was like, I'm going to, what's more than me just healing your mother? I'm going to show you I can help you through a difficult time. And then when other people I know love and care about go through similar things, I can know how to help them navigate the difficult time. I'm telling y'all, it's not easy caregiving for a person. Your first time is your mother. You know what I'm saying? It's not easy caring her, you know, to death. You know what I'm saying? But God, so back to the Lazarus thing. You want to know God is a healer, and God wants you to know him as a, as a resurrector. So I want to, got to heal my mother, and now that I'm helping, that I helping my mother with her work and everything, I was helping her with her work even before she passed away. And so I learned so many different duties and experiences and skills, and I could put them on my resume and say, because I was helping my mother with her work, I could put on my resume X, Y, Z. But I could have done that before if I hadn't helped her, you know, with her affairs, and I know how to handle my affairs. Like, okay, so this is how you do X, Y, Z. I'm learning stuff. I did not know until my mother was getting sick and was passed away, you know, um, and had passed away. So sometimes God don't do it. Sometimes God don't heal. Sometimes God don't keep them alive. But he's what he's trying to do. He's trying to to he's trying to develop different skills in you and a faith in you. And so I have a faith in God. Now I'm like, Lord, whatever you want to do, I, I'm I'm gonna do what you say, Lord. I'm, I'm I'm more yielded now. Before I was very, you know. Lord, do what I want. Lord, do what I pray for. Do what I say. But now, now I have an attitude of just, Lord, whatever your will is. You know, if you want me to live to be um, 90 years old, I love it. You want me to die in my 40s. You know, I accept God's will because I know that his will is better. So while, while you would think that living a very long life is the best thing, I'm telling y'all, I have, I have developed so many new skills helping my mother, okay? I developed so many skills sitting at her desk. And answering questions and figuring out the answer to solving certain problems. I did not know how to do it. I, I was just like a little spoiled little girl before my mom passed. So I was spoiled. Mommy, how you do this? 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 Now people are coming to me to answer questions. They ask my mom to answer. So I'm like, okay, Mr. Ned, you starting to get a little boss in this. You get a little boss in you now. But I've always been under my mom's shadow just being, you know, a little girl. You know, a little girl mindset. But, but God is equipping me. He's preparing me. And so, not that my mother has to die for me to grow up, but I do know that God, you know, he, he used her, us caregiving for her and her passing to develop different skills in me so that I'll be ready for my next level. You know, I'm, I'm in the process of writing some books right now. I'm talking with the publisher. Now I'm going to start, you know, get the book and everything prepared to release very soon. So stay tuned. Um, but God, even, even that God let me write a book 
finish a book in this grieving time. Why caregiving, you know, and so the book, some of the stuff in the book is going to be a certain kind of way because I had developed different skills in me because my mom was sick and passed away. You know what I'm saying? Certain skills, something I couldn't have written about until after she passed away. You know what I'm saying? So again, I don't know what, I don't know why God has not answered your prayer yet. I don't know what he's developing in you. I know what he's developing in me. I don't know what he's developing in you. Okay. So it may be something God wants to develop in your character and your skill set, your work abilities, your parenting, maybe you being a wife or a mother, maybe some things and you can't be the best it needs to be it until God cracks something in you. You know how, you know, it's one thing to, to squash an olive. It's one thing to crush an olive. You squash an olive, you got some olive juice. Uh, if you squeeze a seed of an olive, you get olive oil. So sometimes God is crushing you. He's crushing the seed, not the fruit. He's not squeezing the fruit. He's crushing the seed in you. And that's how you get your oil. You know, you get your anointing from oil. You get anointed by oil. So some of y'all got to let you go through a hard time because it's crushing the seed and it's going to develop in you um, an anointing. So you may write that book. You may have that ministry. You may have that, um, that, that, that group that you do. You may have a group for women who've been divorced or women who lost a child or women who, who, who having a husband with an addiction, but God let you go through it with that addicted husband to help you write this group. We have to write this book or to have this group to help other women out. I don't know what God's doing in your case, but let's trust God. Say, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know why you're not healing my husband. I don't know why you're not healing my child. I don't know why you're not healing me. But I welcome the experience and I want to know you in a different and better way. Thank you guys for watching. Please share and subscribe to Righteous Rama. Bye-bye.